Thank you very much. Um, I'm shortly going to hand over to Owen. I'm Mark uh, Williams, the writer. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief overview uh, of the story so far of Jason and the Argonauts, just to help give the context to what we're going to show. Uh, the play was originally commissioned by the Courtyard Theatre in Hereford uh, as a mainstay show for family audiences. Um, it did a, a short seven venue regional tour in England in 2013. Uh, it's a new version of the classic legend. Uh, it's one that draws on the classical interpretations of the tale, but also, more importantly for us, it also references uh, all the stories that have been inspired by Greek myth. Uh, from the Marvel Comics universe to things like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings because um, we just feel that's an audience's expectation when they come and see a show like this now it's as much that as it is the original stories uh, and most importantly the heart of the show is, is to create something really exciting and fun uh, for a family audience something that really satisfies their expectations of these kind of epic tales uh, so Jason uh, is an ordinary human He's someone who doesn't have any powers, he just exists in this world of gods and monsters. Uh, and through his quest, the story is very much him deciding the kind of hero story that he wants his own uh, life story to be. Uh, with the help of the mighty Argonauts, some of whom are seated over, over there, uh, he takes the legendary ship, the Argo, on the ultimate adventure for the Golden Fleece, the quest for the Golden Fleece. Uh, there are big, ambitious set pieces in it. Uh, we wanted to fully explore those kind of things, how we could tell those kind of uh, big set pieces, like things like fights with mad kings and encounters with monsters, uh, like the harpies and the sirens and the army of the earthborn dead. Uh, and in the original production, we discovered ways of staging those big set piece scenes using the four actors uh, in a way that was part live action but also part legendary storytelling, uh, so that the Argonauts could almost be timeless narrators who can step out of the action and become other characters so the story could be told in a really fluid way but with Jason himself uh, always present, always in the immediate present tense so he had that excitement that he might not get through this alive. Um, the initial production also featured music uh, but as an isolated soundtrack so it had uh, one scene that was centred around live performance but the aim for the new production and part, a big part of this development uh, has been to really look at music and sound design and how we can use that as a much more organic part of the storytelling. Uh, so the core aim for this R&D, we've had two weeks here. Uh, for me, I'm the writer with Owen as a director, has really been to develop this music and sound potential in, in the first uh, production of the existing script uh, by working with our actors and Dan, composer uh, and sound designer, and also with Charlotte, our set designer. Some of you have seen already her, her uh, model box for this, uh, which really has reflected the work that we've done on it in the sound as well and how all of, everything can kind of pull together for a new version of it. Uh, and there will be a new redrafted version of the play that will come out of this uh, that will, we hope move towards uh, Welsh premiere and touring production. Uh, the big music discovery of our two weeks has been the idea of adding a new Argonaut uh, to our core cast of four. Sorry, Anton. Uh, which will be an actor musician, uh, but also with sound design experience, and some of this will be showing you now. Uh, but who can basically be on stage to facilitate the music and sound and just be part of the storytelling uh, and streamline some of the big set pieces as well. So if we have actors who need to dub, there's a lot of doubling up, so it just really helps that, that be a really smooth part of the storytelling. Uh, and story wise, uh, we thought it was very exciting if the fifth Argonaut was just introduced from the start of the play. And in a lot of the original stories, they talk about the ship being alive and being another character really in the story. Uh, it's a magical ship and it really does feel like it has a presence. So we've really gone with that and we've taken the idea of, of basically the ship being a spaceship as much as it is a classical Greek ship. So the idea people have of the Argo from things like the Jason the Argonauts film, we wanted to kind of build on that and that maybe they can, I don't know if you see there, there's the sort of eye in that design there from the original design, but there's also elements that could just as much be from things like the TARDIS from Doctor Who or the Enterprise from Star Trek. Uh, and moving it away from the idea of being a ship that has to have all the pieces of a ship, but having a central point, which is loosely represented here, which can be kind of like the engine room, the real sort of focus for it, uh, and that will just really help us to stage everything around that sound-wise and practically. Uh, and to finish, our key focus throughout all of this work was 
uh, just asking ourselves two questions. Do, do all of these decisions and does all of this work help us to tell the story? And will it be fun, engaging and exciting for our family audience? Uh, and I'll pass over to Owen. Just going to show. <coughs> yeah, just uh, one of the things that we were talking about is to sort of to make it um, inherently theatrical. Uh, that for a, for a family audience, there's an excitement in, in you are in, you are expected to create the finished product. That we're not going to build the whole ship. We're going to build elements of the ship, but uh, you create in, in your mind. You create that whole boat. Uh, or if we uh, and Charlotte will talk us through this in a second, maybe come on up and, and look at that. Uh, and, and with that, and also then that bleeds into our sound design, um, so that you see the sounds being created on on stage. They're all happening live. It's there's not a sort of Deus Ex Machina at the back that's in play to a bunch of recorded sounds. They're being created either instruments being played or a soundscape created by the cast using the set and the, the sort of textures of the set. Um, part of it, we, we talked about trying to make it to make it cool that for a family show, uh, any kids coming to watch it should want to play on the set, should get up um, and use some of the instruments or be one of these, these characters. Uh, that as, as, a, um, as an inspiration for a family show, we thought that's a really good start. So that it's not alienating. It's it's yeah. It's very. It just should be a really exciting thing. Um, do you want, actually do you want to talk, do you want to briefly talk us through? Yeah, we well, just have some yeah. I mean, I guess the idea is I'm <coughs> familiar with uh, loop station. It's like Ed Sheeran uses where you you take a sound recording to a little box and then it starts looping and you kind of build up kind of a rhythm or a soundscape in this case. Uh, well, that and we'll show you kind of how that works in a minute now. Uh, so what we'll do is take kind of elements of sounds that are built into the set or things that exist naturally within the set and we'll record them live there, loop them and make it into a soundtrack and in that way it will feel like the, the sound is being made very organically from here and very much kind of in the now here as well. So that's kind of a basis of what we're going to build on and then the other thing was that we didn't want to tie it down to any particular style or anything so there'll be sort of electronic music in there, there'll be uh, various different theme tunes uh, for the heroes that they kind of suit their character and very much comes from this sort of modern day kind of interpretation of these heroes. So it's not kind of set back with, you know, liars and roots and, um, you know, classic kind of stuff. It's kind of very much... Yes, there's been a conscious that. decision to move it away from the classic Greek sandals, yeah. uh, shields and, uh, you know, the, the sort of, the, the world of the Ray Harry Har Harry Harrison movie and to make it more redolent, and you can, then you can see from some of the designs here that it's more um, redolent of some Star Wars, Universe, Dune, sort of an unplaced, create our own world in which it's a menage of different uh, textures. But not ignoring it. But not ignoring that, with references and, and referring to the Greek original. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to just talk Yeah, so we were, um, as it's been mentioned, looking at ships on a, on a, on a different, um, lots of different scales, so spaceship, uh, all sorts of sh container ships, um, and uh, the nice little world. So um, we uh, looked at maybe what we're using is, is lots of different ways of platforms that we can use and, and move around, so we started looking at orreries. The, the, those fantastic um, machines of where they demonstrate the universe and how all the planets move around. It, and <coughs> so that was an inspiration. Sort of, yeah. If we've got a, a, a central <coughs> hub of, of sound and Argo part, then our, the rest of our set will move around that in, in, in a way. So um, these will all move around and to form different sections. We've got sections for <coughs> so this. A cave structure, there are palaces, there's, yeah. there's um, um, Phineas and the Harpies, the Harpies and the dining, dining table. And then ultimately, it's our boat. So things just, it's always very simple to do in the model. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, yeah. and yeah, yeah. Mm. so using lighting and, and <coughs> but taking elements like, a, like Mark said about the eye from the, from the original kind of Greek looking at our own, um, and then you've got the kind of influence of the music and the sound and the, the throbbing, um, what's the word, TARDIS, 
and then the black kind of galleon of a ship which can be used and, um, and then also gives us a lot of things to play with and then these can move around and become clashing rocks and things like that. <coughs> Just yeah. lots of play and I think it's the same with the, the costumes, it's kind of bringing quite contemporary, almost futuristic and, well, and futuristic but then also kind of nicking a little bit from Nelson and a little bit from, um, from Greece as well. But nothing that can't make, mean that people can't change really quickly no. to become a harpy or become a mad king or, and then be back as forces or deputies. It's, it's making our own world as well as world that we've ever So we talked through lots of different ideas, we've been through the, the whole uh, of the script in great detail um, and Mark's uh, planning on doing another uh, taking that to another draft with some of the ideas that we've thrown up in the air. Uh, and then we just thought, come on, let's just play, let's try out some of the stuff. So we're just going to share with you some of the things we found. It's no, uh, by no means the finished version uh, or a rehearsed version. They're things we thought, oh, that's fun. We, uh, we'd explore that more in the rehearsal process. We, we like this texture. We like how this is working. Um, and we've, we've made do with what we can find in the room, essentially, or in Wilco's. Um, yeah. Uh, and so it's you know we we we're sort of um, yeah just to give you a, a you a taste of, to allow us to play. So, so Jay, at this point, Jason has been um, he's been given his quest. His, his parents he's come home to discover his parents have been killed. Uh, they've been uh, there's a usurping king in their place, uh, and to to uh, avenge their death, he needs to get the golden fleece from the other side of the world. Uh, so he's met Medea uh, and her partner Argus, who have given him the mightiest ship uh, in all uh, in all the world, the Argo. Um, and we reveal when the ship is first revealed, we see the uh, the sort of beating heart. Hopefully, uh, lights. It's sort of like the central console of a, of a TARDIS, uh, and it's from here that all the sounds and our soundscapes and our worlds will be created. Uh, and that starts to throb, uh, generally as though it's got a little life of its, a life of its own, it's a deep sea creature. Uh, but every captain needs a crew. From north to south, east to west, I call the brightest, bold and best. Join my quest and come to me. Let monsters quake and tyrants flee. Argonauts, assemble!
too much you I make the maiden smell and the lady god stink I'm all fierce There ain't no need to fuss Just boom, get baby, get on the magic bus Insects and rocks are dancing in the street I got the beetles and the stones dancing in the street I'm all fierce Stick them up, get in the bus Get jiggy in the bus Ziggy Stardust, yo! I got sea monster shake it to the samba. I got more bite than a deadly black member. I'm all fierce. There ain't no place to hide. From kids to timber to I'm walking, walking on my wild side. All fierce. Yeah, my tunes will twist your melons. I'm all fierce. Yeah. This is Hercules, and this is Medea. Medea. Leave it to me, lads. I'll take it from here. Quest for the Golden Fleece! <laughs> uh, 
And so they set the, set the boat up ready for departure. And we would see all the uh, disparate elements come together and the ship being created, uh, those parts in front of you. Uh, and it would be done as part of a scene with dialogue, the ship would be being created, unlike this. Um, <laughs> fine. <laughs> And then we started playing with um, the one of these that might happen as the, as the boat's being constructed and they're setting off out from harbour. Um, the, the, the very sounds of the boat and the soundscape of the sea would be being created from the disparate elements of the boat uh, and different parts of the set. So then, again, we'd have uh, the cast room will have radio mics on uh, that would be were being fed through a loop station in the centre, which we don't, we don't have a lot of that frequent, but we wanted to play and give you a sense of what that would sound like. So we're just going to try and create something now, um, just so you can get a sense of it. Over to you, Dan. Uh, and this would be done, lighting would help us here quite a lot. 
Um, we think the lights down here, this might be a nightscape, a moon appearing at the top, with the mask here being held by Holly. Uh, light is from underneath the nightscape, the sea at night as the boat traverses the sea. as the storm hits them. And they get washed off course. And they get washed in over towards the island of the six armed giants uh, who are famed for hurling giant rocks at boats passing the island to destroy small ships and knock them into the water. and try to lure them to their deaths on the rocks. Uh, and the boat has hit a line. Where do we find it? I don't believe it. It's 
Hercules is gone. He'll be all right. I know he will. That's easy for you to say you're safe on deck. Only thanks to Hercules. And if his sacrifice means anything, then we need to keep going to Colchis. So where are we? We're off the map in the middle of nowhere. My dear, can you see any familiar landmarks? Only one. And I hope I'm wrong. The island of the Sirens. Oh, no. What are the Sirens? Bad news. Their voices mean death to any who listen. Listen, listen, listen. Orpheus, listen, listen. steer us away. Duh. Duh, watch the sail. Let's get some speed up. There's no wind. And we'll just have to row for it. Without Hercules, we'd be faster to swim. Swim, 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 swim. Some cat What was that? Nothing. Jason, stop. We're going round in circles. Circles. Orpheus, what are you playing at? What did I do? Steer us away now. Deep yourself. Cabin, 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 cabin. Is there a problem? No? Because if there is, talk to my face instead of muttering behind my back. I didn't say a word. <laughs> Don't tell me I can't. Oh, I'm right, Solvus. Loser. Loser. What did you call me? Just start on me. It's not my fault when it's lost. lost. It's too hot. Everything's a shimmering haze. Can't see a thing. You're blinder than Phineas. Hercules would be able to see. He could see for miles. Hercules is bold with us. Only Hercules is Jason, let him go. Hercules chose to leave. I would have taken his place. I would, but, but you I didn't. didn't. Doing my best, all right. Your best is not good enough. Give him a break, Orpheus. Jason's, Jason's only human. Only human. Oh. human. Maybe, Maybe Hercules would have been a better captain. Do you really think so? But, but this is Jason's quest. Jason's yes. quest got us into this mess. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? But we have to keep going. We have to get to Colchis. Colchis, yes, I have to rescue my brother. The brother you left for dead. I tried to take him with me. You failed. We'll never get to Colchis. We will! We just have to keep going. I must get the Golden Fleece. You don't need to get the fleece for us, Jason. We love you. We're so proud of you, son. Mum? Dad? Oh, boy. We've missed you so much. We're here for you, Jason. Your family. My family. Come to us. Come away with us. Come back, Jason. Come home, son. No, no, Dad, wait, 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 I'm coming. Run, Dad, wait. Wait, 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 Discord and of the harpies and the cacophony and turns it round and turns it into a harmonious tune um, that becomes a song that then drowns out the sound of the sirens and they're able to escape the um, the power of the sirens and move on in the quest through his 
to his song, he then would create. We haven't got that far with that. Um, and that's sort of really the elements that we've, we've got to show you, sort of the sound and the sort of bits of the staging. Um, there, were certain, there were other elements from the, the previous production that were successful and we would pick up on these uh, and take, we'd take those on, but some of the elements here that were elements that Mark felt that uh, we could have he could have developed from the early the other uh, production, which is why we looked at those and that sort of sounds good. But no, thank you, thank you all for coming.